What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today we will be talking about Spartan Energy Acquisition Corp or better known as SPAC. We will be talking about why the stock has been down the past couple of days and which company it will merge with and whether or not I will be buying this stock. So let's get started. So as you can see Spartan Energy Acquisition is down around 2.65% today is up around 7% for the week, flat around the one month chart, and is up around 27% on the three month chart. So 27% is not bad, but in comparison to other SPACs like Shell and Nikola, which are in the same electrical vehicle business, you are seeing that the returns are very, very poor. For example, Shell is already a $40 stock, and as you know, Nikola touched all the way to around $95 a share before coming down to a reasonable $35 to $40 per share. So what is Spartan Energy Acquisition Corp? Well, it's a special purpose acquisition company which focuses on the energy industry in North America. What they mean by energy, they're talking about clean energy. So something like electrical would be preferable for them. So for the following reasons, they merged with Fisker. So Fisker is an electrical vehicle car company, which produces electrical cars, uh, usually for residential reasons. They produce trucks, golf carts, and some concept cars as well. So let's take a look at their website and let's discuss whether or not I will be buying this stock. So here we are on Fisker's website. As you can see, we're in the about section. So basically, essentially what it's trying to say is that it's a company developed in California, headquartered in Los Angeles in 2005. Essentially, they have digital rending of concept cars right now, which will be produced in 2022. So looking at these images, I'm not going to lie. I'm not very impressed. The body looks quite wide and apparently the battery life for this car is half of Tesla's. But the price point is something we have to discuss. So it is estimated that Fisker's standard car like this will cost around seventy to eighty thousand dollars, which is much more expensive than um, a Tesla car or possibly a Nikola car in the future. But they cater to more uh, luxur luxurious uh, people, expenses, and things of that nature. So the thing I really don't like about this company is that they have not had a developed or a full functioning prototype, which is available for people to use. As you can see, there's a video of someone in the car, but it's a concept car, which can only go five miles per hour, um, as discussed by the CEO. And 2022 is quite a long time, to be honest, because by that time, you expect the Nikola semi-trucks to come out. You're expecting... Uh, Tesla to get the Model Y out, uh, the Cybertruck out as well. And I, I don't see anything unique about this company specifically. For example, in my previous video, I discussed how Shell was unique by converting gas-powered uh, diesel trucks to CNG or electrical or natural gas uh, cars and trucks, So, which was quite unique because no other company has, I've seen does that. So if you see on the dashboard, it looks so similar to a Tesla. They have the front screen right there. There's nothing proprietary about this, right? It's more expensive than a Tesla, way more expensive than Tesla, to be honest. And I, Tesla is well known in the community. They already have that market share available. So yeah, so it's not very enticing to me, but let's talk about whether or not I will be buying this stock. So it may come to no surprise that I do not have a position in the stock, nor will I have a position in this company. As I said, there's nothing proprietary about this company. And just keep in mind, Fisker has already failed once. They've declared for bankruptcy already once, I believe around six to seven years ago. So it's not, you know, the newest company. It's not a startup. So as we know, Fisker's failed. Uh, P ratios, I mean, it doesn't matter, but again, it's 145, which is well above the 25 median. The market cap is under a billion, which may be good news, but there's a reason why the stock is not as high as Shell or Tesla or Nikola. 
um, because there's nothing proprietary. It takes until 2022. And just to clarify, uh, the $70,000 price mark was for a fully upgraded service. Their base model starts around $40,000, which is still more expensive than a Tesla. And why would you buy some another company when you can buy a Tesla for a cheaper price? And Tesla is more well-known, has self-driving in some cars, and yeah. But in terms of recommending the stock, I would say it's probably personal risk because I would say the bottom for this stock would probably be $10 a share because the cash amount in this blank check company before it merges is $10, around $10 to $11 a share. So if you do buy at 13, I would say the most could go down is probably $3, which is not bad, like considering 25 to 30%, which is not too bad. One thing to also remember why we have such a big downturn from around $18 a share to all the way to 11 or 12 was for two reasons. One, the main SPAC industry was just, you know, losing its hype before regaining a little bit of it the past one or two weeks. And Fisker moved its merge date from August 21st to Feb of 2021. So the closer we get to the merger date, the more it tends to swing up, as it can be seen in the cola and shell stock. And there you have it, folks. I do not own the stock, but I would say it's not a bad buy if you're trying to get into the EV space, as I am already fulfilled with my EV sector in Shell and possibly saving up for Tesla stock. Thank you guys for watching. Please let me know what you think down in the comments and have a great day.